Hi, welcome back to some Kinkoi. I'm not going to say, watch the previous episode, blah, 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 blah. At this point, you should know. And if not, you'll figure it out. Anyways, do I have anything to say? No, let's get started. <laughs> the next day came, but I still couldn't see Rhea. Ah, yes, this is after the awkward at first kiss. Yeah. Anyways, she was right next door, too. But even if she was right beside me, there was no response to my knock. Rhea. She wouldn't reply when I called her either. Uh. Sunday had finally come, but I couldn't work up the motivation to do anything unless I made everything right with Rhea. I tumbled over in the bed. Oh! Why did she run away? Was kissing me that bad? I was pretty confident we both felt the same way about it, too. Uh, Sandman was going to get me if I kept this up. And it wasn't even noontime yet. Oh, well. Sandman. I closed my eyes. We had the day off today, so I may as well take a quick nap. If I tried hard enough, then maybe I could figure out how she felt when snoozing the day I went to keep in school all the time. Just maybe... I would remember just a little about her. Maybe. Big it maybe. Big iffy. Ah. I woke up. And I am thirsty. Hold up. Is it me or like... It looks a little weird. Or is my computer acting weird? I don't know why, but it's kind of creepy. Do y'all see what I'm talking about? It looks a little different. It's water time. I woke up. Night sweats. No, it wasn't that bad. My heart was pounding, though. A dream? Did I have a dream? I wasn't sure. I couldn't remember. All I knew was that I had remembered something horrendous, and that sole impression lingered in my heart. What in the world was that just now? It was... Oh. Scared me. Ah! Ah! I don't know where I heard what sounded like a chair shifting and screeching across the floor. Oh! What if someone was like committing sewer slide but with a rope and then that sound was a chair getting kicked out you know what i mean it kind of i don't know why that's all these specific i'm really sorry a sound indicating that rio was home i mean he's talking about a dream i'm only gonna assume it's a nightmare and then i heard a chair like that i don't know i don't know i mean also ria as we know she's in a dark place also you could tell by how she behaves a sound indicating that rio was home the irony that she was there but i couldn't see her made my chest tight you know what else is tight Never mind. Ah, dang it. I wanted to see Rhea. Maybe it'd be better if I brute forced my, any, my way in like Mina-chan had before. No, no, you wouldn't call that meeting someone. Even if I got to see your face, it was pointless since we'd never have a decent conversation. If I wanted to talk to Rhea. If I wanted to talk. Uh. Ah. Uh, that was when I finally realized something. I lifted my head. Yeah, there was no need to worry. I just wanted to meet up with Rhea. Hey, Rhea. Faced the wall and spoke in a more sentimental tone than usual. No reply. But she was definitely on the other side. That was all I needed. Um, yeah. Let's go see the sunset. The rooftop might, may be a no-go, but you know where it should work. I'll head out first and wait for you. No reply. I said my piece and headed outside. That was right. This had always been enough. A one-sided request was all it took. All that le left was to wait. I just had to wait for those sharp ears. Uh, it was kind of chilly. Well, I had dressed warmly so I'd be fine. Time to be patient. And she never arrived. Oh my god, am I right? Attempted slewer slide? Yo, that'd be crazy dark for this game. For this game. I told her, let's watch the sunset. But the sun had already gone completely down. Man, she was late. Oh well, she was a girl, so I'd better forgive her. Boy, girl, they, them, I don't care. Like, just forgive them or don't forgive them. Patience made you a decent man, after all. I probably would have been upset in the past, though. If the roles were reversed, I'd be annoyed if a guy kept me waiting. But when it was for a girl... Time you spent waiting wasn't so awful, since it was for a girl. 
since she was the girl I had fallen in love with. Oh, he realized that pretty quick. You're late. Okay, she did not commit suicide. <laughs> God, that was awfully dark. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Hang on. Don't act that way after you kept me waiting for three hours out in the cold. I'm practically a human popsicle. At least come to dinner with me. Huh? I ignored that look she gave me and opened up the bag I brought with me. I had a simple gas burner and kettle inside. That, tinfoil, and... The one you gave me before was delicious. I got hooked. I bought a new package yesterday. Did you know? They say frozen meals are an ideal campfire. Uh, Although the manufacturer may not agree, camping enthusiasts found a way to prepare this kind of thing outdoors. It should be safe to eat so long as it's cooked. This was a method I found after doing a bunch of research about frozen food online. I'd imagine it tastes better if prepared at home. But doesn't this suit the two of us better? <laughs> Seemingly defeated, her expression softened and she walked toward me. We used the tree that happened to have fallen over as a seat and sat down next to each other. I lit the burner and set up the kettle as it'd be bad to use direct heat. I placed the net over it, then put the fried onigiri, wrapped in tin foil, on top. Yeah, it'd probably make more sense to cook ordinary onigiri. It was originally intended to be microwaved, so going out of your way to make it in an open flame was kind of getting your priorities backwards. It's fine, right? Seasoning and whatnot would be a pain. I winked the timing and heated it up enough that it didn't burn. Here. Miso soup. Thank you. S As if I care about hangups like that. We shared a meal together. It was surprising things had returned to normal so quickly over something as simple as fried on eating. How weird. I'd given up just a few hours before, knowing I couldn't see her even if I wanted to. Once we met up, we went back to being our usual selves. I'd venture a guess that was just how childhood friends worked. This had to be the way Rhea and I were meant to be. Hey, Rhea? Huh? Do you like me? <laughs> she spat it out. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. That was a bit much all at once, huh? But you did like me, right? Can I go <laughs> Don't run away. If you run enough now, I'll call out to you in front of your door. I'll say, you love me in front of all the boarders. <laughs> Yo, that'd be actually really, really funny. <laughs> I kind of wish she'd run away. No way that wouldn't be embarrassing. Rhea gnashed her teeth. She set down the mug full of miso soup. It's fine if it's past tense. Just tell me. Yada. Talk about dishonest. I wanted to confirm if that's true since, to be honest, I already knew the answer. I noticed ever since we were little. Soma loves me. <laughs> I assumed we were both guys back then, so I never imagined it in that sense, but it's obvious when I look back now. She had to have had her reasons for listening to whatever I told her. Soma loved me, I loved Sylvie. Ah, great, love triangle. And Sylvie loved Soma, who she mistook for a guy. I believe our little love triangle helped the three of us grow even closer over that short of time we were together during summer camp. Hi, hi, ski da ta yo. I'm not. She quickly nodded her head and faced away. Knew it. Exactly as I expected. Mukashi wa na. Nima chigao zo. Choshi nan na. Alright, you just kiss every guy friend. Hmm. Oh, this wasn't what I expected. You don't anymore. <laughs> Her face was bright red. Hmm. You're right on both points. And you know what? When we were kids, I had no interest in Soma whatsoever. I thought you were a guy friend, 
Not like I could help it. I had no interest in Soma. But right now, I love Rhea. <gasps> oh, yeah. He said it. Uh, uh, so... <clears throat> it's so cute seeing her this way. She's always spicy. She's always, always spicy. Really. Perhaps those words came out of my mouth unexpectedly, easily. Because a certain princess who said, I love you, like it was her catchphrase, had rubbed off on me. I had sorted through my feelings in these past two days. Pretty quick. I was not expecting that, once again. Oh no, is this going to be a short route? I don't like that. If this woman has if this woman has a shorter route than I got it, I'm going to be very, very upset. Like, very, very, very upset. I might not even play Golden. No, I'm kidding. I would. I absolutely will. But seriously, if she has a shorter route than I got it, I'm going to lose my crap. I love you, Rhea. Sorry. I doubt if she was any good at stuff like this. I shouldn't tell her over and over. My feelings were enough. <laughs> eh? Oh, he kissed her. <laughs> nice. We accepted it without running. It wasn't forceful like the other day. More of a peck. My goal was to overwrite how awkwardly things had ended before. Good. Overwrite complete. And I obliterated any aversion I felt to kissing along with it. You good? Didn't we do this the other day? Stop. No big deal, right? She looked mortified but didn't argue the point. She was so cute. And heck, if I really, really think back. Weren't you the one who kissed me the last time? That's crazy. We both leaned into it, to be precise. There wasn't enough of a difference to say either of us made the first move. But when our faces drew close, she was the first to close her eyes, if nothing else. She was the first to initiate it. <laughs> Don't apologize. It made me super happy. Oh, so you're just a horn dog. Didn't sound like she could come up with an excuse. She was angrily trying to downplay what happened. I didn't mean to push her either. I leaned in. The perfect distance for another kiss. Ah, oh, yes. Look at her being shy. Rio didn't run. Nice. And their lips met like second nature. Alright, without the effects, please. God dang. I'll say this again, Rio. I love you. How do you feel? This was the important part. Who cared about the past or who cares too? What was important was how she felt now. I was in love with Rhea. These next moments would determine how Rio felt. Although, given that we safely shared two kisses, I went in assuming this would all work out for the best. <laughs> uh, Rhea stood up and distanced herself from me. I'm gonna say it again like I said it an episode or two ago. We can fix her. It's okay, she just needs time. We can fix her. What does she mean it didn't matter? If she didn't love me, she could just say so. She should just say so. If she wasn't going to say it, I wasn't going to give up. Rhea. Uh oh. I love you. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say. But I would like an answer. I don't want anything else. Do you love me? <laughs> She's not denying it. Rhea's expression skewed. What the heck? Why did she make that face? Good question. I don't know. Why did she... Look like she was about to cry. Aw, oh, I finally came out. Skidayo。ずっと、ずっと、ずっと大好きだった。初恋だった。初めて人を好きになって、ずっと好きだった。お前がシルビーを好きでも諦められなかった。10年間離れてても忘れられなかった。He has Maria Bishop by the collar literally check this out. <laughs> 
徘徊したあの時も屋上で抱きつきたかったすぐに俺だって言いたかった寝てるお前見てキスしようかなって5回くらい迷ったゲンワッ大好きだ昔も今も昔から今までずっと全部好きだ Bro better hug her. Her somber voice echoed across the lake. Why had she said it that way? I don't know. I didn't know, but what she had told me was. Ria then. Yorena! Uh oh. Whoa. She's not used to it. She ran away. But why? Kurena! Is it one of those things where she's afraid of hurting someone or hurting herself or both? Maybe? Massive teardrops fell from her eyes. It was true I couldn't ask for anything more after what she told me. Ria, I couldn't ask, but I also couldn't let it all end here after I had seen those tears. These tears. <laughs> <laughs> Rio violently rubbed the corners of her eyes dry. やっぱり会わなきゃよかった。前にも知るビーにも。うん。会っても認めなきゃよかったんだ。俺なんてもういない。そう言ってればよかった。もう。10年も前にいなくなってれば。Rio? <laughs> What was she saying? Why was she crying? The only way I felt about her was... Hey, Rio, that directions. Rio's eyes must have been too watery to see and she staggered her way toward the lake. It was currently high tide, the shore was damp. Hey, yo, what are you doing? Even then, Rio didn't stop. It was a matter of time before she fell in. Why didn't I act sooner? I headed for the shore, the bottoms of my feet icy. Uh oh. Did she just try to off herself? Yeah, I think she did. Ria somehow floated to the surface. Could I get her out? She needed something to grab onto. A flurry of thoughts raced through my mind. But this predicament was worse than I imagined. Huh? Rio. Blurble. Rio surfaced for a second, but in the next moment, her whole body went flaccid. She was drowning. No, she had lost consciousness. Hey, how? So fast. Her limp body bobbed helplessly in the water. Rio! I dove in after her. Uh. Gua, he said. So cold. The frigid December weather was nothing short of intense. Rhea. Oh my god. My body heat was snatched from every point of contact. I was freezing. The cold water was painful. It was agonizing. When I fell in 10 years ago, hadn't it been August? The water was practically comfortable back then. But now... <laughs> this was so intense I'd lose consciousness if not for this sense of responsibility I felt. Thanks to Rio's tiny frame, I was able to pull her out of the icy lake with ease. <sighs> Rhea, you alright? No response. She wasn't conscious, she had fainted. Bro needs to run into the, 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 the building and throw her in the furnace. I mean, in a hot shower. Don't be mad. I put a hand against her mouth, turned my head sideways, and put it against her chest. Her heart, I could hear it. She was breathing, too. Thank goodness, I wasn't so cold that I had given her a heart attack or anything. C it wasn't the worst case scenario, but it was still terrible. I carried Rio over my shoulder. Caught a hospital. <laughs> Never mind that, call an ambulance. What's the closest hospital for me? <laughs> Never mind, the hospital... Even ignoring that we were soaking wet, the four flew into an instant panic when he saw Rio was unconscious. Reyna, who had shouted first, somehow managed to work her phone and call for an ambulance, but... Rhea! Someone else came rushing over first. Oh, God. God dang it! Her face went pale when she saw Rio's condition. 
Then, when she saw that we were both so tied to toe, she shot me a blot through steel. If I was a woman, I'd give her a good old slap, because god dang, she's so annoying. Doesn't matter who's responsible, just get here right now. But before even that, Reina intervened, panicked from her first 119 call. 1919, okay. Jusaki gave up on attacking me and rushed into the thank you. Into the cafe attached to the foyer. The clerk put up their apron and rushed out as well. Jurosaki was a reliable person, so she started giving precise instructions. She wrapped Ryo up in a blanket she had brought out and held her in her arms. Uh, then no, I'm not. So, she got in the car she'd called for. Wow. Reina ended the long emergency phone call filled with nothing but questions. For real, they have all the wrong questions. I may have to. No, not that they have the wrong questions. It's like there's stupid questions like, come here, bro, she's dying or something. I may have taken out on the role of her hero spur of the moment, but compared to the someone like me with zero knowledge of emergency treatment, hospitals, or otherwise, Jogosaki was way more reliable and seemed to know how to get a handle on things. Thank goodness she was here. All that left was to believe in the hospital she said she was familiar with. I think she just tried to commit slower slide right in front of us. That's not cool. Don't do that. Don't do it at all. The day had started off hectic and ended horribly. Things were starting to go so well between me and Rhea too. I bet he feels guilty. Like it's his fault or something. Has she really fainted because the water was too cold? It definitely was chilly enough to knock you out cold. Oh, that cold. Something worried me more than that. Before she fell into the lake, Rhea had been panicking for some reason. She said she loved me, right? She said she loved me, and yet, why had she been crying? She's an interesting one, but I am very sure we can fix her. <laughs> Yay, silent transitions. Those are the best. Ah, yes, this is going to be the depressing episode. Still no Rhea. Ayaka. For Jeez. I see. It sounded like the situation was worse than I thought. I assumed she'd be back by now and waited up the entire night for them to return. No one had re no one had heard from Jogosaki and Ryo's cell phone was still turned off. And worse than that? <sighs> Looks like Maria Bishop won't be performing. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Only two days off in the entire year. That's actually crazy. Talk about getting exploited. Thank God. I swear she does sometimes just complain. Hello? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you with Rio right now? You're right. <laughs> She's taking a huge load off of my mind by ruling out the worst possible income. Outcome. Uh, okay. Yeah. She knew the call there without giving me any details. Some details would have been nice, but alright. Her life wasn't in danger. But she wouldn't tell me anything more. Had something happened? I don't know what to think right now. This is, this is weird. Please excuse the background noises. That's what happens when there's a full house. It may have been cold, but she had only fallen in the lake. I heard her heartbeat and she was breathing too. 
Something more was going on. It was almost like falling into the water had been the entire problem. I headed back to the dorm the second classes were over, so that I would know immediately if Ria, or, if, or even if Jogasaki had come back. But, Jogasaki had yet to return to the dorm. Do you not know what silent mode is, Ayaka? Jeez. Really? Well, yeah. Thanks. Let me know if she gets in touch at all. Mm. I've been cut off from them entirely. It sounded like she was still at the hospital, so... <laughs> Sobi and Ellison had their phones off, too. Bro, oh, that must be so frustrating. Holy crap. Like, why do they have their phones off? And why do they get to see her and not... Oro? Oh, no. I guess they had to be at the hospital. Had Ria really not woken up yet? It had been nearly 24 hours already. Cases where people fell in the election winter? I looked up similar incidents online. Heart attacks were a common concern, but Zoe had reassured me that Ria's life was not in danger this morning. Did that mean it had nothing to do with her heart then? There were, however, lots of harsh possibilities. Chilled blood flow to the brain could cause it to trip a breaker and put you in a comatose state, for example. Holy crap. I didn't know that. Like, I know, obviously, it's not good. <laughs> but, like, like that? And how quick does that work? I wonder. Asking for scientific reasons. That thought woke me up completely. I was up until a little after 1 o'clock that morning. I looked up the chances, as well as any examples, of people waking up from a coma. But, oh, he's tripping, tripping. Ah, dang it. That was the limit of my stamina. Pulling an all-nighter yesterday had been a total waste. I'd gone over 40 hours without sleep. Holy crap. I practically fell into unconsciousness. I hadn't felt any drowsiness, though. Perhaps my brain had been too overloaded by all the bad news, and I subconsciously blocked out the rest. Reasons for heart attacks are why people might faint. Oh man, the more I looked into it, the more my memory I assumed was lost to old time started to trickle back. This episode is honestly crazy. I was not expecting that. But I'm glad she didn't try to sewer slide with a rope. That would have been bad. <laughs> my vague recollections of Sylvie when she was little. I got a cute, slightly timid impression of her. But she quickly grew mischievous when playtime came around and I'd caught a glimpse of her current personality. Docile yet mischievous. I remember those two faces of hers. And... Mm -hmm, I recalled that she visually had two different faces too. She cut her hair, hadn't she? While she was in Japan. Why had she done it? That I didn't remember. No. Wait, I believe in one of the other routes, uh, if I remember right, I don't know, somebody could fact check me, but I believe Sylvia cut her hair because Ichi told her to? I don't remember well, but I swore it had something to do with Odo. She refused to tell me? I guess that's no big deal, really. I was kind of pouty way back then. Felt weird to say this about kid me, but I had been a brat. And Soma had two faces of her own. Well, I could kind of see why they thought she was a dune, but also, come on. Come on. <laughs> I'd awoken reinvigorated terribly, so. I might have searched this word up already, but I don't remember. Give new energy your strength too. We are fully committed to reinvigorating the economy there. Uh, I have an idea of what that is, but what a weird death. Uh, you're the last person I want to see right now. 
Yeah, morning, Akane-chan. My mind was clear. So much so that I could remember all of the distinct details of my dream. Enough to remember what sort of condition Ria had been in. Ah, yes. That was fun. Oh? She hadn't woken up. What? そうまか。目が覚めた起きた。よかった。起きたのね、リア。お二人とも落ち着いて。気分はいかがですか意識はこの指何本に見えますか何ここあれ何で病院池に落ちたんですって血圧が急激に変わって体がついていかなかったみたい丸一日昏睡状態だったのよそうああそっか幸い傷口に雑菌は入りませんでしたので感染症の心配はありませんでしたしばらくは安静が絶対ですがねそっか そっか。ああ、全然覚えてない。心配させないで。心臓が止まるかと思ったんだから。悪い。あ、位置は多くは伝えておりません。まだ気づいていない様子ですので。That's messed up. 大変心配はされていました。すぐ目を覚ましたことを伝えますね。お願い。事情はどこまで？目覚ましたから平気まで了解しました。何も教えなくていいわよ。あんなやつ。はあ？ <笑><笑> もう心配はありませんとご本人が伝えてほしいとしばらくは安静が必要ですがすぐに戻ってくるとのことですOkay But really? I'm so glad to hear that I was so relieved I nearly fell to my knees We'd all avoided all of the worst possible outcome Thank goodness Seriously So where is Ria right now? The hospital right? You think I could visit? I'd really love to see her うん。申し訳ありません。詳しい旨は言わないというのが相馬殿のご本人の。失礼。失礼。あなたは、それを知っていたのか。失礼。あなたは、それを知っていたのか。失礼。あなたは、それを知っていたのか。失礼。あなた
粗相をなさらぬように She left me alone with Sylvie. I felt like it had been a while since I'd last seen her, and I could tell at a glance how tired she was. For someone who was usually a ball of energy, I could only assume that Sylvie's exhaustion was due to sleep deprivation. I heard Ria woke up. <laughs> yeah, I'm thankful. I worked my way into the conversation from an approachable topic, since she and I were both fully aware of what I really wanted to discuss. It seems like you kept her company, huh? A princess kept her company. Everyone okay on the work front? <laughs> if you can't, then I could go. But Sylvie so had never taken this tone with me before. Provocative, I suppose you'd call it. Huh? I will. Tell me where she is. Oh? She knew but had given me the same reply as Alice. Dang it. Tell me, which hospital is it? Why can't you tell me? Even with hints of anger in my tone, Sylvie let it pass with a smile and nothing more. Dang. No good. There was no point in getting angry. It was clear they hadn't sworn to secrecy over petty reasons, which meant Sylvie likely wouldn't be so easily swayed. There was something serious going on here. Man, she she is acting a bit different. And it's very uncomfortable because like he said, she's always a ball of energy. But how could she be a ball of energy right now? Sylvie turned her back and walked away. Just like with Alison, all I could do was to silently see her off. But there was one thing. The one thing different from with Alison was... So was he... So was, what? <laughs> Sylvie wasn't as mature as Alison. And Sylvie, Rhea, and I had a special bond. Hola. Just before she left, without turning back around, Sylvie said to me... Remember what? Remember. She didn't let her show in her behavior, but I could hear her voice quivering slightly. Eh? And with that, she left. She hoped I could, I would find my way to her. Huh? I got it, Sylvie. What were you trying to say and whatever Rio was hiding? Do we got it? I don't. But it was still difficult to pin down the location. Why? What? We're supposed to find out on our own? I don't. I don't like that. We still got about 10 minutes on the clock. First of all, I couldn't remember why that camp had been held. The event had taken place by the shore over summer vacation. The neighborhood association or whatever had organized it. But you could safely say there was no reason for Sylvie, who was the princess of a whole country, to ever attend such a ridiculously small scale event held by a neighborhood association of all things. Did Sylvie had some special reason to be there? Some sort of dispute in her country that would make it best for her to keep away temporarily? None of that mattered at the moment. If you were to say there was an ulterior motive, it would sound like some pretense by dastardly the adults was at play. However, judging by how everything played out, you could say there was an ulterior motive. Like visiting a sick patient. A good well of that designed to delight those who suffered from terminal illness or natural disaster. I'm assuming this is Rhea. And she does not look like... She does not look good. She's not looking very uh, well. <laughs> so... It makes sense. Oh my god. No! I'm, the realization is just hitting me right now. Oh no. Please no. It makes sense. The change of hair color or the change of hairstyle and everything. 
wigs. Oh my god, why didn't I catch that sooner, bro? I feel so dumb right now. Bro, if a state guest were to attend, then it was only natural to assume there was a theme of that caliber. Then, as long as you looked part in whatever neighborhood association was around, that would successfully constitute a local goodwill cultural exchange. This meant there were three types of people who participated. The locals, those from the neighborhood association who were simply unaffiliated and only acted as participants. Sylvie, who played a central role. And lastly, the main figure of the event, the patient being visited. That camp was the first place I ever met Rhea, which meant she shouldn't have been part of the neighborhood association. What's a terminal illness? Haha, <laughs> ha. well, of course. Someone's a weirdo after all. <laughs> what? <laughs> Jeez. I was a dumb as hell about with no common sense if I did see so myself. You're always bandaged up and you run out of breath the second you run. Jeez, dude, just freaking ruthless. With how I ran my mouth, I deserve to get a good smack or two by any adult that happened to hear it. Actually, I think I did get scolded by the adults a few times, now that I remembered it though. But just to put it out there, if I were to defend myself... Bro better say yes. What do you mean, will I? Aren't we already friends? Aww. Ryu never looked upset. Reasonable enough considering she loved me, I suppose. We managed to be fast friends even if we came from way different walks of life. Even if we were born in entirely different circumstances. Wow, this is getting so sad. Even if our lives veered in completely different directions afterward. Oh, this sucks. Rio was currently at a hospital, so that match was for certain. But I had no idea which hospital she was in. Rio was opposed to me visiting, Sylvia and Nelson wouldn't tell me anything, and Jogosaki had yet to return to the dorm. The lady who brought around her car was sworn to secrecy, and nobody else from Jogosaki's friend circle knew where they were either. But the only clue I could claim to have was that she was likely in this city. The cafe lady made it back in around two hours, which meant she knew where the hospital was and had taken them all the way there. It would make sense that the hospital was within an hour's drive of the dorm. No, considering the cafe lady's personality, I'd imagine she stayed with them for at least a half hour or so. Perhaps it was within 45 minutes from the dorm then? Somewhere within the 45 minute radius by car, if you assumed it was in the city, that would be in the 20 kilometer range. That was a massive area. Several hospitals she could have been hospitalized that came up when I googled it too. I tried to search by phone at first, but they all said something or other about personal information and refused to tell me. That being the case, I opted to skip school and spent the day scoping them out one by one. I went around the hospital ward, ward taking a good look at the, pati the inpatients, but never found the right place. I couldn't search enough, for that matter would be thoughtless to cause too much commotion. Looking for her on foot was going to be a Herculean effort. <sighs> I checked my clock. It was around 5 o'clock at night. Most hospitals recommended visits up until 5 p.m. They wouldn't let you in, save for special circumstances with a family or the like, after 6 p.m. I guess today was out of the question. Bro, oh, this must be so frustrating. No, it is. Maybe she would be discharged and come home today. I placed my bets on that slim possibility and kept waiting for her at the door. I, I just thought about something too, dude. If Rhea has a terminal illness and uh, I don't know who said it, but they said something about how she was lucky that she didn't have any infections on her wounds. Oh my God, dude. The hints are there. I just did not. Mm, I'm assuming the wounds are from like surgeries or something. Maybe she would be discharged and come home today, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I already read this. But that didn't pan out either. There was no activity from Ryo nor Jogosaki by lights out. Yeah. I had to clear out from the foyer. Yeah, she's okay. 
Sobi and Nella's son had reassured me of that. She shouldn't be in critical condition anymore. I was just worried. I just wanted to see Rhea. I missed her. I wanted to see her and say what I hadn't been able to before. For real, for real. Hmm. Pat. She brushed my hair. This reminds me of her root. Those were good times. The lap pillows. Kind of. Pathetically enough. That instantly settled me down. Having a female friend pet your head was soothing. And I felt positively pathetic for it. But above all else, Reina's palm was so unbelievably gentle. I wanted to rely on her. A long time ago. I call it long, but it was just before I came here. This past summer, actually. Yeah, you're right. But it did seem like something out of the distant past. Part of that was because every single day had been so chaotically busy ever since I came to Noble Academy. But more so because those days had already slipped my mind. I kind of... Messed up. I didn't consider how much trouble it caused those around me since my little sister was involved. She was in a fix, so when I showed off to try and do something about it, everything started to go sideways. When it was all over, it had just turned into one huge problem. He told her about this problem, the baseball problem, or the band problem, or whatever problem, and her root. But now, clearly, he's telling her again, but with less details, it seems. Interesting. And I wonder why this is... I wonder why he's talking about it now. So that's why this time around, I'm not sure I'd say I'm worried so much as uneasy. I thought this would be important for Rhea, getting her to tell me her true feelings. But when I did, this is how it turned out. Her hospitalization. Better just chuck that up the bad luck, but before that. I'd confess my feelings to her with the best of intentions as I believed she loved me back. However, all she could do was cry. She cried, panicked, and then collapsed into the lake. Almost like I'd driven her to do so. I had nothing but good intentions, but it had brought about the worst possible outcome. Just like what happened that summer day with the base. Oh, okay, I see why he's saying it now. So, most likely, I wanted to reassure myself. I'm sure that's part of it. I wanted to see Rhea, to see her and figure out for myself why she had cried. Hadn't I hurt her? That was what I wanted to ask. I'm selfish, aren't I? After sorting all of my feelings into order, I realized how astonishingly selfish I was. Rather than being worried about Rhea and the situation, my mind gravitated toward easing my own apprehensions. I was absolute trash. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Push. She pressed down for me on my head. Almost like she was scolding me. Huh? そこに立ち向かわなきゃ。今回のことが片付いても一生どっかで不安なままだよ。Take a stand and face it head on. How to face my insecurities? じゃあね。明日は登校。白とは言わないけど、あんま She has an interesting way of talking. Raina left. She'd applied a bit more pressure than I expected when she pet my head, as I could still feel the weight of her palm against my scalp. Take a stand and face it head on. I had to face my past. I had to face them. No. Now couldn't be the right time. I had to focus on Rhea. That was it. I pulled out my phone. I had changed phone numbers after the incident over summer break and deleted all of my old contacts. However, I still had my sister's number. Uh, my finger froze above the call button. 
was going to call her and I knew exactly what that meant. What did it mean? I knew and yet. And we're gonna pause it right there. Yes, we love the cliffhangers, don't we? Oh yes, gonna make you wanna come back. More than you already want to come back, you know what I mean? Like if you wanna come back already, now you're gonna want to come back even more after this little cliffhanger, you like that? I'm glad. Well, it's time for me to go anyway, so don't be mad. Anyways, wow, this episode was absolutely crazy. What the freak? Like, the crying, the throwing herself in the river, the her liking him back. I mean, that wasn't too surprising, but everything else. And then Reyna once again coming through, you know, being that that safe person to talk to when he's feeling down. Because now that I think about it, there weren't a lot of moments like that with Ella or with Sylvie. I just feel like with Reyna... I feel like he he has gone to her for, like, everything. I don't recall him being the way he is with Reyna, with Ella and Sylvie, even though they were all together, you know, in their own roots, you know. But I just find that so very interesting. And once again, it shows why she's my favorite. She's funny. She's very caring. And most of all, she's hot. But anyways, <laughs> no, but seriously, seriously. It just, it kind of reminded me of Veru and when he first told her about the baseball thing and he went into detail and he was crying like a little baby boy in her lap. I think that moment that he had with Reyna then when he was opening up about the baseball incident is probably one of my favorite moments of this entire game, to be honest with you. I don't know why, but it just, it marked me. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but it just really stood out for, to me and I think it played a huge role in why I love Reyna's character so much you know she's just that person to go to you know and I really really like that we all need a person like that sometimes but with that being said I think that's all I have to say about this episode all you know this episode was actually crazy you know and the whole thing about Rhea having a terminal illness absolutely threw me off it just makes so much sense it makes so much sense and like I'm sure there's more to why she's like super spicy a lot of the times but I, I'm sure that anyone with a terminal illness is definitely not going to be all sunshine and rainbows, you know? But with that being said, I'm going to wrap it up here. This episode was just... For me. <laughs> it was a good episode, though, nonetheless. But enough of that ranting or the yapping. I'll wrap it up here. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you did enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting that like. Subscribe, too, if you haven't already done so. Share this video. You want to see more visual novels like this? I'm going to say it again. Hold on to that thought, please, until we catch up with all the other visual novels I've started. And when I mean the others, I mean Cafe Stella. And of course this one, you know, I need to finish this first too. But then Cafe Stella, and then new suggestions. Of course, we're, again, we're gonna play Golden Time eventually, but I need a little break from King Coin, you know? Anyways, with that being said, I'm gonna let y'all go. Y'all stay safe, and as always, until next time, guys.